Hi everybody. Tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of work here on the T-bar tank. Uh, I recently put an external canister filter on this tank and it has uh, UV sterilization on it. So I no longer need the internal UV sterilizer I have on there. You can't see it from this angle. It's in the back on the left and it's behind all the woodwork and all that floating plant and everything else. Um, but I no longer need the sterilizing uh, unit inside the tank. It takes up a lot of space and it doesn't really provide me with the water flow in the direction I need it. I'm also not satisfied with the water flow I've got from this external canister filter. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've bought a power head and we're going to install that tonight. I'm going to put it in the back left and I think we're going to go ahead and strap the head cam on and do a POV uh, video of me taking it apart and getting everything situated in there properly. It's going to involve a fair amount of work. I have to take both the lighting units off the top, I have to take the hood off, and then we will actually be able to pull that unit out and do a water change while we're in there and then I can get my new power head installed. I might even move the um, space heater or the tank heater that's in there uh, to a different place uh, as we go. So let's just see what happens when we get in there. In the meantime, let's go over and look at a couple of water parameters. I did a little bit of water testing prior to this uh, so that I know what I'm doing when I get in there. I know how big of a water change to do, etc. So let's go over and look at a few water parameters and then we will get right back over here and start working on the tank. All right, so in this tank, we have something a little unusual. This is one of my few tanks that actually has a pH that is higher than my tap water. If you see this file here, this is my tank water, and this is getting close to 7.6. This is my tap water, and right now we are running at about neutral, uh, at about 7. And I normally run a little higher than that. I normally run about 7.3 out of my tap. But because of the nature of my well water and my water system, my neutralizer doesn't just magically always make it the same pH. It only adjusts what comes through. So if the acidity of the uh, groundwater increases, you know, if the pH goes lower, then the raising effect that my neutralizer has is more limited. If the pH of the groundwater is a little higher, then as it comes into my system, the additional buffer that is added by my neutralizer actually pushes me up to about 7.3, which is about where I like it. Uh, neutral is tolerable though. However, for some reason I have two tanks, this tank and my gudgeon tank, that the pH sits up around 7.6 and I honestly have no idea why. I've never really delved into it. Uh, the only thing I can think with my gudgeon tank is the fact that there's no wood in it, but I have no idea how to account for that in this tank unless I possibly have a rock in there uh, that is reactive and is giving me some buffering capacity that I'm not aware of. Other than that, I have no idea why I've got higher pH in this tank than I do any other tank. Anyway, uh, that will allow us to do a fairly sizable water change while I'm in there doing it. If you will notice the vial on the right, that is my nitrates, and it always comes out looking redder on camera than it really is, so that is still uh, very much in the orange. And I actually, on a side note, I'm going to be shooting some video very soon about uh, comparing nitrate test kits, the API versus the CCAM. I've had a little more questions uh, raised about the accuracy of those, so we're going to do a little comparison video here coming up real soon. So look forward to that. Anyway, let's get back over to the tank. I'm going to strap the head cam on, and we are going to get a little bit of a, my point of view as we get in there and start putting that power head in. All right, everybody, here we are. We're prepped and ready to go. I got my bucket with my piece of plastic down there that is called a uh, shelf liner. If you see that in the store, you can get that at any kind of hardware store. That is my cat Bootsy. He's waiting for that bucket to be full of water because he loves to drink fish tank water. I uh, got some stuff unplugged in the back. We unplugged the UV sterilizer and we unplugged the tank heater. It's always important if you're doing a water change and the water level is going to drop below the tank heater. You don't want that exposed while it's plugged in. It gets extremely hot if it's not in the water. So now we are going to start my water change and we are going to do that by getting the lights turned off on the forward fixture here and just moving this to the back and then we can get this opened up. Look, can you see one of my little Otosynclus sitting right here? So we're going to get the water change started and while that is happening we're going to start taking the rest of the hood off 
and the cloth and the lighting fixtures and we're going to get them all out of the way and once the water level drops a little bit we'll actually be able to get in there and start pulling some stuff out without all this stuff in our way so give me a minute to go get this started and we'll be right back and we'll start getting all of this started all right we've got the tank draining we've got ourselves a little bit of space to work with so now we are going to remove my black cloth that just covers up I don't like the glare and the lighting I don't like to see all the fixtures and everything this one is already turned off uh, be careful if you use these fixtures they have these little sliding things that come out and they will often get caught in the edge between the glass and the tank and if you're trying to move them or pick them up and you twist it it'll it can get hung up in there so just keep that in mind if you get uh, fixtures that have those little sliding bars on them uh, if you will notice the tank light is out here these fixtures and these are just longer versions of these these are these core life fixtures uh, they actually have a safety if they get turned off and they're hot you can't turn them right back on and just between scenes there we actually had a very brief power failure uh, and it blinked off and came back on a moment later and these lights did not actually come back on when the power came back on so I'll have to let them cool down and reset them in a little bit here so this hood arrived broken in the mail but it was a clean crack all the way down so i've actually been able to use it uh, ever since i ordered three more hoods from the same company and all three hoods showed up shattered uh, so i've just wound up using this broken one uh, for all this time so we can just put this piece right here for the time being this isn't going to be a big job so it doesn't have to go far out of the way and this edge is very sharp so i always have to be very careful with that I'm always worried about the day I'm going to get a little extra action in one of my videos. So let's get this out of the way safely over here. I'm not too worried about a little bit of water on the carpet. <clears throat> this is actually what we're going to be installing. Believe it or not, that is a 425 gallon an hour power head. So that's what's going in here in a little bit. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Alright, I've got something beeping in the other room and I don't know what it is. Uh, this is my new spray bar, and I don't like the fact that it's only got two sections with vents in it. The other one has several sections, and I can take a section about this long and actually have it angling up. I actually like it angling up and back, and then the rest of the bar I like angled back and down. And what that does for me is it gives me a little bit of surface agitation. It also creates a little bit of surface agitation near where this surface skimmer is so it actually keeps the surface skimmer from being too aggressive it actually pushes some stuff away from it and that way when i feed um, it doesn't just immediately go right down the surface skimmer uh, etc so there is actually a method to my madness and that's why i like the section right next to where the surface skimmer is to create a little bit of you know turbulence and it sort of keeps that skimmer from being overly effective believe it or not that's why i do that the stuff going down the back actually creates a current this way which brings water from the bottom up and it helps keep the tank more oxygenated it helps keep all of the stuff in the back that's difficult to gravel back out it helps keep that moving uh, in this case however this tank is so busy and so congested that that's not going to be very effective so what I usually do in most of my tanks especially tanks that have more length to them is I put a power head on the opposite end of where the filter pickup is sort of down and across the back and that gives me that circulation that keeps that water moving and keeps a lot of detritus from settling in the back I don't mind so much if it settles up front I can back that out easy enough it's the stuff back here that I can't really get to and in the case with this tank I actually set this tank up long before I had experience at maintaining a tank so it's set up much more based on aesthetics than it is practicality and while it looks beautiful it is not easy to get in there and clean and maintain as you can sort of tell I've got a lot of stuff going on in there um, I mean this is like caves and rocks and there's all sorts of stuff it's not just a couple of rocks with a piece of wood over it there's layers down underneath of there uh, for stuff to get buried in so this is our target we're trying to pull this out of here and I'm hoping I can do it without really even disturbing anything uh, if I can get these suction cups to unhook that will be the key I've said before that these things either don't hold at all or they stick to the glass like they've been bonded to it somehow so that wasn't too bad. In this case, 
that wasn't bad at all they all came right off so that is what an internal uv sterilizing filter looks like and this is actually one of the smaller units that i have and you can see it's pretty funky so that was coming out and of course i can't do anything simply that's going right here in the bucket and this is what's going in so this is only to keep the magnet separated that is a very very strong magnet so we'll save that for later uh, this i just stuck here so i can show it comes with it it's to wrap around you know you do one of these numbers and go around and around uh, the cord and that protects it i've never really understood the need i guess maybe there's some fish that chew on them as far as i know i do not have any minox chewing on my power cables so i never use these i just put that in and again we just put it right down here in the back facing across and it does have a suction cup so that's enough to get it in there uh, and get it started and let me show you this before i get it in place unless it won't come off the glass sometimes if you push it up against the edge it will come off um, this basically just has a little ball and socket joint that goes in here very simple design virtually silent virtually vibration free i love these these are uh, coralia by high door or high door by coralia uh, i get them on amazon they're very inexpensive and they're just super practical i never have any issues with them i love them for now, I'm not going to mess with the heater. This heater is actually too long to fit in the tank. And in fact, it's been half buried here in the bottom. So I might actually move it. I really don't like sideways heaters, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So for now, this might have to sit back here uh, sideways like that. And we will let the power head flow and pass there. And I can make any little fine-tuned adjustments later on as we go. But I normally put it about a third of the way up and then at a nice maybe 30 degree angle down and slightly towards the back I don't really want it blowing through the tank as much as I do sort of washing the back and the bottom across so that's probably going to be just fine where it is now it's probably going to take a little while for the gravel there in the back to sort itself out and get used to where it's going to be flowing uh, this piece of rock that if you can see that was originally back here for that purpose i used to have a power head back here before i put the uv filter in that is now in another tank but this power head will now blow across that rock and it'll keep me from disturbing on my substrate so we're getting down there on the water i don't want to do too huge of a water change right now it wasn't necessary and i'm already doing enough disruption in the tank so we're going to call that good and i'm going to go ahead and start filling it back up and then maybe when i'm filling it back up we might get in here and do a little bit of cleaning since i got the hood off uh, I might try to get some of the black glass uh, wiped down and uh, see if there's anything else I might need to do while we're in here. So sit tight, let me go reverse the flow on this, and then I'll be right back and we'll get a little more footage of this while I've got the top off. All right, everybody, I got the tank filling back up. Uh, I was going to use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, but I don't really see any point in it. The only place I would have really wanted to use it would have been on the wood, but I didn't really drain the water enough to make a big difference in uh spraying that so all we're going to do really is get in and wipe down some of these areas that are a little harder to get to uh, that i can't normally do when i've got the hood on um, i don't really care about getting it perfect i'm not trying to get the glass clean per se i just want to knock any loose stuff off if there's any green cyanobacteria growing on it that will wipe off very easily uh, the stuff that's really in there and grown into the glass um, maybe some green spot algae that's very stubborn very stubborn green spot algae is very difficult to wipe off um, any of that kind of stuff I'm not too concerned about but if there's just loose cyanobacteria or just dirt and crud uh, and I can simply get in there and give that a little bit of a wipe uh, that's fine with me um, that is a little bit of cyanobacteria floating right there if I could ever catch it but alas I cannot or I don't think I can anyway so that's about all we're really going to do. I don't really see a whole lot of need to do anything else. I got a lot of these little babies in here that can come out. They're just taking up space. Um, some of this more older brown growth on there can come out because that's not looking too good. And really just kind of thin it out. I really do go through a lot of water sprite. 
and then it'll just be a matter of putting the hoods back on getting the lights set back up and getting the tank running again so I'm gonna go and get all of that happening uh, the water temperature feels fine so everything seems to be okay for the time being so let me get the hood back on uh, I guess I can do that right now while we're letting this fill we can get this back part on at least And then we can get this piece on. Okay. And then we can put the lighting fixtures back. should be ready to go by the time the water is done filling now I did have a viewer ask me recently about the temperatures in my tank and mentioned how I never mention the temperatures in my tank so I'm not going to get into that tonight but I will do a video here in the near future uh, about water temperature in my tanks and how I go about uh, maintaining it and which tanks I have heated and which I don't and so on and so forth but you can see this is my low water line the tank is not level so as soon as that water is above there and I can't see it anymore the tank is full so let me get going I'm gonna go turn the water off we'll come back over get the lights back on get the water circulating and then we will look at the final product all right so it turned out really well I'm really happy with the way it looks uh, the water flow is moving across the back I'm able to see some movement in the plants back there so I know I'm going to get good circulation across the back. I'm going to get good distribution of any detritus that gets into the back of the tank. I don't have so much surface flow that it's disturbing my plants. I am able to get my water sprite floating uh, much more in the back of the tank so we can see the roots hanging down but not block so much of the plants up front. And hopefully when the T-bar comes up front a little closer, we will get to see him under the full glory of that 10,000K tube. And it'll just look much better all the way around. So all in all, I'm really happy with the change. It was long overdue. Uh, I've only had the power head for a few days, but I have been wanting to put that power head in there for about three months now. And now that I finally got it finished... Uh, I keep getting distracted by seeing my black ghost knife fish stick his head out of the cave in the front there. Uh, I put some uh, sinking granules in there not long ago and he is actually still coming out uh, sniffing around for them. So that's it. Last look at the tank. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like the changes as much as I do. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. That way you won't miss anything i got coming up. I am working on a couple more videos at the moment. So you don't want to miss those. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you real soon on the next one.